I've made a lot of generators using Lego. Many of them just silly experiments, and none of them have any business being so damn large. But today, let's see if we can make a generator that's actually useful uh, during a power cut and compact enough that you can take it anywhere. We'll see if this generator can light a few lights, power my Lego speaker, power my phone, and maybe a few other things. Now, to make this thing, we're gonna need a cage. So we'll start with this wall, and then sandwich it between these two white support thingies. Then we'll need to mount the magnets onto a core. These pieces here will do, and we'll need to spin the core from an axle. So these wheel jobbies will allow us to pass this axle through it. Cool, now for the fun part. Magnets. Who doesn't love a good magnet? Especially ones that can literally crush your fingers if you're not paying attention. Now this here, this is the hard part. Putting them on the core without turning my fingers into minced meat. Nice. These guys aren't going anywhere. Now, let's finish up the cage. And we'll stick our magnets into the cage here. Then we'll need some gearing. Ideally, a generator won't have much gearing or any at all, as this causes inefficiencies in turning mechanical power into electrical power. But this 3 to 1 ratio is reasonably efficient, and allows me to save my precious copper wires. With these generators being made of LEGO, we're really limited just by the structural robustness of LEGO. The more force you can put in, the more performant the generator will be. But we can't go nuts here with LEGO. So I'm just trying to make this as strong as possible, considering it's so small. There we go. Spinny, spinny, spinny. Nice and smooth. Okay, now we need our copper coils. And here's one I made earlier. It's about 60 grams of 0.3 millimeter wire. And I'm going to mount it onto these pieces here. So that it can be wedged as closely as possible to the magnets here. Great, now to connect the two coils in series. I'm lazy, so rather than using a multimeter, I'm just gonna give it a lick and see how much it's outputting. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yup, this is the right way around. Mm. Now, I'm just gonna make this little cage thing so that I can pop my breadboard in here and hide all the ugly bits and bobs. After sticking in the wires, Let's see how it fares with a bright, high-powered LED. Let me remove these stray ones the magnet hoovered up. Yup, no issues. How about a few more? Yup, again. What about this 10-watt LED array? Hmm, also good. And this 20-watt array? Yup. It's not at full brightness, but it's not bad. What if we add a few more lights to this tractor so that it can see in the dark? This should do. Hey, great. Now it can plow all night long. There are 300 LEDs in the strip here that need around 12 volts, so I'm quite impressed. So what voltage are we actually dealing with here? This rectifier will spit back DC instead of AC, and it looks like we're jumping between 8 and 9 volts. If I flick this button, we can see the peak voltage. This looks to be around 9.5 volts. Okay, this gives me an idea. If we assume this thing can comfortably give us a couple of hundred milliamps, this might be enough to power the speaker I made of LEGO. To smooth the input, I'll stick a bunch of these capacitors into my board. 
and then hook up the generator leads, and stick the Bluetooth amp leads into that, and hide my ugly mess. So, if I start playing Scarlet Fire on my phone here, when the Bluetooth amp is powered, it will automatically connect and begin playing. And here we go! Hey, there we go! My LEGO speaker here is playing music from my phone, powered entirely by me cranking this handle on the LEGO generator. I'm just astounded that you can generate enough power using LEGO to power a speaker made of LEGO. However, if I crank the volume up... You can hear the powerful thumps get cut off as the amp struggles to provide enough juice to those low notes. And if I turn the volume back down, it recovers. And if I stop cranking, it dies almost immediately. Cool, but can it power my phone? Well, first, I don't want to fry anything, so we need the voltage to be stable. This buck boost converter will take any input up to, I don't know, around 40 something volts and spit out whatever voltage and current I want. Currently, it's spitting out around 11-ish volts, but we want 5 volts so that this thing can pretend to be a USB. After some twiddling, here we go, 4.95 volts, close enough. Now, because I'm bougie, I want a USB cradle for my phone. So these pieces here will hold onto the cable. And these bendy pieces here will give us a nice lean to the stand. After we pop on this plate, we now have a stand we can slide the phone onto. Now before doing anything, I'm gonna change my phone's background to a puppy because everyone loves puppies. And because my last background was uh, not puppies. Okay, let's charge. Hey, there we go. We have a charge indicator. So, just how long will it take me to bring this thing up to charge? Well, I had to limit the output current to 150 milliamp to prevent this phone guzzling everything the converter was feeding it, causing it to shut down. Let's see, this phone has a 4000 milliamp hour battery, so if we're charging at 150 milliamp, this will take approximately 28.1 hours to fully charge. So can you charge a phone with Lego? I guess in an emergency you could turn it off and then wind it for 17 minutes to bring it up to 1% charge. I have one last really dumb idea to maximize current to the phone. This is a 1 farad capacitor, which is quite large. If I hook my phone up directly to this cap, as the cap slowly reaches around 4 and a bit volts, my phone should guzzle up everything over the threshold voltage for charging. I stress again, this is a stupid idea. But it works! Feel free to like or subscribe if you'd like to see more of these wacky LEGO experiments.